Hey everybody, it's Charles, your hobby hero, coming at you with another video today. Today we're going to be looking at the actual league prizing for the next set. They just released this on their Twitter page. We've got a lot of things to review, as well as some speculation on what some of the hidden stats on these cards may be, so stay tuned. If you haven't already, make sure you hit that subscribe button down below. I do put out regular content about the hobbies that I love the most with this channel being dedicated to the card games that I play. Now, as we are all aware, we are already a couple weeks into the first league play, and I know at least my personal experience with a lot of stores had to kind of work out the bugs on the league play because there wasn't a lot of information given out to the stores prior to getting the kits. I obviously think that will be a lot less with the release of the set two tournament kits. Now, with the cards that they have spoiled, these cards seem to be much more impactful cards to the potential metagame than we have seen before. So we're going to hop in, we're going to take a look at all the new artwork that has been spoiled, the pins, the lore counter, look at the preview cards that they have spoiled for us so far, and then I'll go over my speculation on the stats that are hidden in the image that we do have for some potentially game-breaking cards coming out in set two. All right, first thing we're going to take a look at is the artwork that was spoiled here. Uh, we've got Shere Khan, which we had already seen this artwork on the side of the gift box that had been spoiled. This is obviously a lot more of the artwork here, just based on the artwork alone and the character skill. I think we're probably going to have somebody that can at least challenge evasive characters if he's not an evasive character in and of itself. After that, we've got the Queen of Hearts artwork. Again, a card art that had already kind of been spoiled, but here we get to see it more flushed out as well. And if she doesn't have an ability on her that says off with their head, I don't know what I will do. Probably we'll have to riot. I could see her being an effect similar to like destroying an already damaged character, which would be pretty cool, uh, that we don't have any kind of uh, assassin-esque effects in the game right now but i could see her banishing an already damaged character which would be pretty cool and then we have another beast artwork down here we already had the kind of gargoyle beast artwork spoiled so surprised to see that we get yet another beast especially since we had two in this previous set so anxious to see what those are very popular characters so it's not surprising to see another two in this set but just to have him be so prevalent back-to-back -back sets is a little surprising. Now I'll take us into the pins, which we had already seen this Honey Wizard Poo card spoiled. Uh, I am glad that they're using it not only for a playmat, but for a pin, because that is one of the best artworks for the set that we have seen so far. Now what is surprising, though, is we have another Rapunzel here. So we have not seen this card spoiled yet, but we do have the card artwork here now. So we know that there's going to be at least one more Rapunzel in this set. And at least with this artwork here, it doesn't appear to be a Floodborne one. So it may be another Storyborn or Dreamborn Rapunzel in this image here. And then of course we have our Lorcana League pin, which is a different color for the Chapter 2 Lorcana League pin. If they keep it the same, the rarest of the pins that comes in there, but it's also also probably the least highly sought after and years down the road they may be more sought after just due to the scarcity but I know for me personally I appreciate the ones that have the artwork on them and then that brings us into our card spoils that we have here we've got Robin Hood capable fighter we've got Minnie Mouse the wide-eyed diver we've got Bucky the squirrel speak tutor and we have got Cinderella the knight in training now, we can obviously see Cinderella Knight in training. She is a two-cost, inkable, 2-2, two -two, one lore generation. I'm assuming we just have a resolution issue, which is why the, the lore is white on hers rather than the traditional black. With the ability Have Courage, when you play this character, you may draw a card and then choose and discard a card. So it's the same ability as the one-drop Steel Simba that we have seen prior. In that sense, she's a slightly higher costed version of that one, but she does get the second strength on there as well. Now, obviously, she has different tags and is a princess as well as a Cinderella target for our new shift Cinderella that has been spoiled. So I do think she'll see some play for all the same reason that Simba is good. She is still good. She triggers Stitch 
now as she's still under two and still has the exact same cantrip. So I do think she'll see some play, if nothing else, just as an inexpensive target that will help dig to her higher form shift card. And the fact that they kept her in steel is very nice. Now we have Bucky, the Squirrel Speak Tutor. And what we can see on this card, he has Ward and the ability Squeak. Whenever you play a Floodborne, something each opponent chooses and discards a card. Now I mocked up this one here and what I think his stats are likely to be. He's obviously inkable. I do think they're going to keep his strength and willpower relatively low. Uh, given the fact that he is already kind of protected by the ward ability, making him a 1-2. They may even make him a 1-1 one, one just so the existing splash damage kind of off of Big Tink would still take care of him if his ability proves to be a problem. I doubt with his ability squeak that we get any more than one lore generating out of him. There's not much room left on his card to be revealed, so I do think we can relatively safely assume that his ability is going to be whenever you play a Floodborne character, each opponent chooses and discards a card. Now, thankfully, this guy himself is not a Floodborne character, but this ability is very, very powerful. If we get the number of Floodborns we expect to get in this following set, this could absolutely hose the mid-range and control decks that we are currently seeing in the meta, as this will make it almost impossible to keep any kind of hand late into the game. As realistically, after turn two, you could be discarding a card every single turn if not two cards every single turn combined with the fact that this card is already in the same colors with like flynn rider which is card disadvantageous it also pairs very well we've already seen with colors like amber which has a card like you have forgotten me in it this card could single-handedly just be draining those cards making it impossible for them to get to their late games as they sit right now and again, the fact that it protects itself and is a relatively low cost to get it down early in the game means even against non-control matchups, this card could be super disruptive. I'm anxious to see what kind of card drawing we may see in the next set because this guy right now seems absolutely busted as the current meta stands. Uh, next, we've got the Minnie Mouse Wide Eye Diver. And what we can see from the spoiler is she is a four cost inkable character. She has shift two uh, which means that she can come in on we already have a one cost mini mouse in red so she can hit on turn two already with what we've seen she does have evasive making her hard to challenge and she has this ability undersea adventure which is cut off whenever you play a probably an action in a turn this character gets plus two lore this turn this uh, ability here, it, the rendering makes it look like it's a minus. I'm pretty sure it is a plus on the card, though, as minus really doesn't make any sense thematically, as you could always just quest with her prior to playing an action in a turn, and it, it really just wouldn't make any sense as an ability. So with that in mind, the mock-up I had for her was similar to this. I do think on the power and toughness, we've got a 3-3 three, three most likely. Given sort of the stats that we normally see on the 4-drop evasive characters, I think most of them are 2-3s. I upped the stats a little bit on that one because I do think her base lore generation is probably going to be 1 possibly even zero with the undersea adventure ability and i do think that like i said the undersea adventure is going to give her plus two lore for the remainder of the turn which is obviously a very strong card especially with as the card way the card is worded currently that would mean that each action that you play this turn would give her plus two lore unless they just rule specifically that the ability can only trigger once per turn and then it can't be added so it is possible we could see her at a zero lore generation possibly even weaker stats since she already has evasive probably something similar to getting her willpower down to probably two but even if that's the case i think evasive and this undersea adventure would be enough to really shoot her up we don't see a lot of cards in the game right now that can generate lore past what's on their printed cost kind of unexpected lore i guess you could say most times you can plan and know what your opponent's going to do with the exception of shift right now this card would add another layer to that playing songs like reflection for one 
for an additional two lore generation and being able to stack multiples of those if she comes down and shifts on two and in theory you play three one drop actions the following term she could be generating at minimum six lore possibly seven or eight depending on what her printed lore cost is so this card could potentially be extremely powerful in the next set and then lastly, we have a Robin Hood Capable Fighter. Uh, he's a two drop for steel that is uninkable with, with an ability Skirmish. When he's exerted, you can deal one damage to blank character. Now there's quite a bit of his card that is still cut off here. So I do think that one is conditional. A lot of people have just been thinking that it's one damage directly to character. Uh, in the mock-up, I put him at a one three. And I think that's going to help his survivability a little bit. I think he's probably only going to be a one lore generator. Two lore on two with a really good ability would be more than we've really seen up to this point in time in the game. So I do think his skirmish, again, is going to be conditional. So you're going to be able to exert him to deal one damage to a an either exerted character, a floodborne character. It could even be a readied character that we may see. And then depending on how conditional this ability is, I think it's going to affect what his baseline stats are. If it is a better ability, like he can deal damage to a ready character, I think we'll see lower stats here in like that 1-3 range. If it is a more conditional damage, like it has to be a Floodborne character or an already exerted character, we may see higher stats, like a 2-4 possibly in that range. I don't think we'll see anything more than one lore generation here though, but an interesting ability for sure. Could really slow down cards that are getting played in the aggro decks such as Lilo. If he can target Lilo's behind a bodyguard character very easily, that would be very nice. I think this guy sees play in just about any circumstance, minus if the ability is to deal one damage to an already damaged character. If that's the case, that's probably the worst case scenario for this particular card, but otherwise I think could be a really solid card. So there you guys have it. There are the spoilers that we do have so far, as well as some speculation on what those cards may be in those tournament kits. Make sure you let me know what your thoughts are down in the comment section below. I would love to hear them. And until next time, guys, Hobby Hero, out.